Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Bikini and the Brain. I am here with the lovely, capped off, five days out, Ashley Kaltwasser. Oh, snap. That is quite the intro. <laughs> Can I get my name legally changed to that? To Ashley Shoulder Capped Off Ash <laughs> Kaltwasser? How about Ashley Capped Off Kaltwasser? That's pretty cool. Ashley Capped Off Kaltwasser. Or we can combine Capped Off, sir. <laughs> Cat Walser. Ashley Cat Walser. Yeah. <laughs> That's happening. If you guys see her at an expo or something and you remember this podcast, you have to say, hey, it's Ashley Cat Walser. <laughs> Cat, Cat Walser. Something like that. And we'll know what you're talking <laughs> yes. about. But the reason why he's making reference to the caps is my shoulder caps. I've been working so hard on my upper body and my shoulders in particular because. If you guys have been tuning in for a while, you know that was my lagging area. And we're trying to, you know, it's always a work in progress, trying to even out the bottom to the top. My legs never had a problem getting muscular, but my arms certainly did. Maybe that's uh, due to my very heavy track background or genetics or you know, probably just both. Yeah, yeah. So um, we are now five days out from her show when she's been, I mean, there's the, this is like, we're trying to figure out the math on this earlier. Well, let's see, you to give them a rundown of all your shows you tried to do this. Well, year. yeah, so first it started with the Arnold. I really wanted to do the Arnold Classic. Um, I got accepted into doing the Arnold Classic. It's invite only. And uh, I had to drop out because of my eye surgery. I wasn't recovering very fast. And uh, yeah, it didn't, didn't happen. So uh, yeah, I was like, okay, well, whatever. I'll just do a show, you know, in April. And it was going to be the clash. Uh, but they were scheduled it to now this weekend. But after all that, there's probably been about four other shows yeah. that I prepped for, and then it got canceled or pushed back further into the year. So this is one of those shows that got pushed back into further the year. This was supposed to happen like April 4th, I think. Yeah. And now it's happening uh, this weekend. So holy crap, it's actually it's here. It's peak week. Holy moly. Holy mother of pearls. Yeah, yeah. What sucks too is that we had there was one weekend there was three shows. Oh and we're gosh. Like, and we're like, okay, well, if one gets canceled, there's no way the other two. Will be that was like the safe this weekend. Like, yeah. no matter what, you know, one of them's going through. Yeah, and I was like, I can go to them, no problem. I can travel that day, no problem. And there's no way not one's gonna go through. And then all three got canceled. So I'm like, <laughs> and it happened. The first show that we wanted to do happens to be the week of Colorado State Championships, which is here. And I have people flying in already and actually staying, some people are staying in my house too. So I'm like, man, well, there's no way I can go to Clash. So it sucks how it worked out. But Ashley's a trooper and she stuck with it. Yeah. You know. Anyway. I'm, I'm going to miss not seeing you in the crowd, like being the pageant mom, like posing, yeah. like this way, this way, doing all those <laughs> hand gestures, you know. No, he doesn't really do that. I'm kidding. <laughs> but he does help me a lot backstage and everything, like even with my hair or something, like my hair is sticking up. He'd be like, oh, let me get, let me get that with the comb. Like, you're very helpful. But. You know what it is? I don't ever want you to look at pictures and after the show and be like, oh my, this could have been, how did this happen? You know, because then that's, that's on me at that point, you know? So I'm like, yeah. and I know how we analyze the pictures after the show. And I just, I'm like, so want you to walk in perfect because I don't want to even be like, my hair was up. I don't even want to hear that because I, I could have controlled that, you know, yeah. right? control the controllables. Yes. So, but I will say to you, Ashley, and to everyone, whoa, <laughs> to you and to everyone who has, who's competing right now, um, really hats off to you guys for staying with it. Last weekend or two weekends ago in Denver, which I didn't think was going to happen. We had, uh, we haven't had a show since March and we had 130 people do the show. And I was like, man, that's some serious people that were dedicated and stayed in prep maybe for six months eight months i don't know some of these people have been prepping since january mm -hmm. you know and we're in august that's eight months of prep so hats off to you guys if you've been sticking with it hats off mm -hmm. to you ashley for Oops. being a good role model of these people and not like going the other way yeah uh -huh. i mean gosh i've seen there's a lot of people that are just itching to get on stage or so desperate to get on stage i'm like one of those people but uh, <laughs> yeah there's other people that like you know let themselves go a little bit during this time and you know what i will say looking back on everything i'm so lucky that i moved when i did because i wouldn't be able to prep in california yeah. i would have to be living with you for like two months straight out <laughs> in in colorado because they can't get gym like i'm pretty sure there's a lockdown still like there is yeah so like uh that was a good uh move literally on my part uh to move to <laughs> vegas because everything basically as far as gyms are concerned back to normal with a few exceptions with these masks 
mask rules are always changing every day. Sometimes it's, oh, got to be of your mouth. Only when going in between machines, sometimes it's like you have to wear it coming in and coming out. Sometimes it's like, as long as it's on your face somewhere, hanging like an earring, that's okay. You never know. But the point is, it's back to normal, except for the mask. Yeah, so I'm yeah. blocky. Yeah, so yeah. So hats off, hats off to you for sticking with it, because it was, I mean, there's a lot of people who didn't. And so, um, but the episode today, it's so, it was cool, because we were talking about doing this type of episode a couple weeks ago. But what better week to do it than the week the that you're in? Peak week. Yeah, so the episode today is going to be about peak week, common mistakes, um, what, to what, expect. To, what to expect, what to do, how it's so different case by case. How it feels. And how it feels, yeah. So um, I guess we just jump right into it. Let's you know? jump into it. Jump. <laughs> oh, we didn't dive. We didn't dive. I did it anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always say dive in and she does the diving. So we, so we got jump. Jump in. We got that. We're doing hand motions for you guys to see the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, so peak week. So here's the thing with peak week. Um, one of the things I think people really mess up during peak week is they try to do way too much. And here's the thing, you want to have a predictable outcome. It's very important that you have a predictable outcome more than anything else. And I see this happen more than, I see it happen to bodybuilders a lot. I also see it happen to bikini competitors a lot, but probably more so on bodybuilders who are trying to do all these crazy things. They cut their sodium, they sodium load at the beginning of the week and then cut their sodium towards the end. They water load at the beginning of the week and then cut their water completely at the end. They run, they do diuretics, even, even ones that are over the counter. And then they'll sometimes do prescription ones and make it even more, get you even like crazier tight, like in, not tight, but like flatten out um, in an attempt to like cut the water. So we're going to talk about all these things, uh, carb loading too hard. People are carb loading like crazy. And then even like the day of the show doing pancake loads and things like that. <laughs> and so we're going to talk about, you know, the things I think that in my experience in the way, at least the way that I do, the way Ashley does it. Um, of what works and what we need to be looking for during that during this very important week. So, any any tips you want to go right into it with any tips? Um, as far as uh, the food itself, anything? Yeah. So, yeah, like your I guess your your mindset probably okay. more like your mindset. The mindset. Be, yeah. Okay. So I will tell you right off the bat. I'm a little nervous because uh, I haven't been on stage since last September due to all the cancellations and my eye surgery in the beginning of the year. So I'm a little bit nervous. I'm nervous because since it's been a while for me, I mean, cause I'm, I'm a person that used to compete like what every month and a half to two months. Yeah. You so, have plans of doing eight shows. Oh year. yeah. But I, I haven't been on stage in a hot minute. So like, I'm almost like a little bit sometimes finding myself to be unsure. Like, cause I forget how peak week like feels and how I'm supposed to look like little indications. Like I have this little Telltale tell sign, like, oh, I'm ready when I sit on the toilet and I can feel the <laughs> tendon sticking out of my butt yeah. or my hips or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, we all have those little things like, oh, I see this little thing. That means I'm getting ready. That's kind of like, you know, that, but the unsureness makes me a little nervous. And I know I'm on the right track, but I just find myself second guessing like, oh, wait, am I lean enough or am I too lean? Like I'll yeah. go back and forth all the time. Um, and, you know, that's just me taking that long of time off and kind of being unsure. But uh, I'm, I'm nervous about that. I'm, I'm nervous about a possible suit change color, <laughs> suit color change. Do you, wanna, do you wanna talk about that? Yeah, not, of course. Not, we won't say the color. Not, it's not confirmed. We're it's not, gonna, not confirmed. We're not gonna say the color, but um, so this is one of those things, and I think this is really cool too to talk about because uh, this is something I, I would say I probably do it more than, than most, but like to take, I, I think that unless you're, you know, if you're, if you're the current Miss Olympia, I say, hey, bring exactly that because that's what's won. That's what they want to see. But if you're not, I say try new things. You know, try new things and so you can see what is the next thing that you can do to make you have that more spark, to freshen it up, to change it up. What is going to make you climb that little, little bit? And when you have people that are like so close already, like little things like a suit color change might be... Uh, might be great, but it also might be totally stupid. So it's like, it's one of those things like, oh, they're a genius. It worked. Or like, oh, they're an idiot. Why did they try that? It, there was already, it was already working. So you have like, but Ashley's cool because she's like, she is willing to try to take yeah. the risk. You know, we'll it's cool. See. So, we'll so we see. shall see. <laughs> yes. Very but, past her comfort zone. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, I've been wearing a shade of green since 2012 and not deviated from that at all. Um, but I've ran out of shades of green to wear I've worn every <laughs> yeah. single shade, except for like mint green, that a little bit of crap yeah. on stage for my skin tone. But there's another color that looks very nice on me that I want to try. But 
I don't know. I, I might not be brave enough. We'll see. I'll, I'll make that decision probably the day before our show. Yeah. So this is, I've had, I've had a crazy idea for, we threw it out, I don't know, four months ago, something like that. And uh, I'm happy that it's gotten this far where you're considering it. Yeah. But I think, why, you know, why not? I don't, I don't know. So I mean, we'll YOLO, see. right? You'll never know. Maybe it'll be the best one yet. Yeah. I mean, they might hate it. They might be like, why didn't you do that before? It looks so good on you, this color, right? So, but so, I'm not promising anything. I might chicken out. Yeah, I, I, I have a feeling you, I have a feeling you might. <laughs> <laughs> what if I have a nightmare about it? Like, if I, you know what? If I have a nightmare two nights before the show and it's telling me, don't do it, I'm going to do it. Until I see you, <laughs> until I see, like, and that sucks. I'm not, I'm not going to be there, so I don't want to pressure you, but unless I was the one double knotting your suit. <laughs> or you can't get out of it. I don't until that moment happened. I don't. I don't. We'll, we'll see. But regardless, though, even mm-hmm. if it's not this show, it'll be the next one. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I still want to wear it. But as far as like my first show of the season, I don't know. I'm always like afraid. Like, she's, she's, I don't want them to be like, "Who's this new girl?" She's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? I think like one of the great things about like how. You know, I've, I've competed a lot, so, you know, we're, we're very familiar. And uh, everyone's going to be like, oh, who's this new chick? Yeah. Like, I want to oh. be me. I don't want to be some new chick. Who's who's that girl? I don't think she's the girl that won 19 shows because her suit color is different now. <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> I hey. mean, I guess, I, guess, I can't rule out the possibility that it's, that it's possible. It's just not probable. You know, it's been a, it has been a year, so I'll give you that. But I just don't see it being even probable, you know? Yeah. It's like, I just don't see it happening, oh, you know? But yes, I'm down to try new things. That's yeah. exciting. And you know what? That's the great thing about, you know, competing is, like, you can have fun with it. You don't necessarily have a uniform you have to wear, so, you know, why not? Yeah. But as far as how I'm feeling otherwise, I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling anxious. Um, it still hasn't, like, hit me yet that it's almost time to step back on stage. Like, you know, being here in Denver is definitely super motivating, and being around my fit people is definitely going to get me more in the zone and in the mood and, like, yeah, I'm ready to do this. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm also feeling quite cranky. Yeah. Uh, sleep has not been good lately. Sleep's the, killing me. The closer I get to a show, the worse I sleep. Like, the last two nights, it's been four hours, four hours. The thing about my sleep is, like, I'll go to bed at a reasonable hour, like 9.30 or whatever, 10.30. Um, but, you know, wake up at, like, 2.30 a.m. and be like, yeah, I'm ready to start today. Let's do cardio. Like, <laughs> so energized. I have no idea. It's like... You would think that I just took pre-workout or something, yeah. and I woke up just like out of bed, like, "All right, yeah, let's start the day." Woo. <laughs> I don't know. It's like the opposite. I feel like a lot of people have a hard time falling asleep, and then they can once they get asleep, then you know they sleep in. But I wake up so early. Yeah, I'm so already an early bird. But I know. This and is like sometimes you're like, now. I remember one time someone was at the gym like at 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. out here, and they're like, "Oh, I saw Ashley this morning. Like, I woke up." at eight and had all like, these texts. Like, I saw Ashley at 24 this morning. And I was like, what What are you talking about? Like, we're working out in an hour. We, it was so funny, but yeah, you were up at like three or something, three or four, like in the morning working out. Uh, I but, don't know what's wrong with me. I'm, I'm so weird. <laughs> but uh, hey, if we're going to other, uh, you know what? Like I said, if I'm competing on the East Coast, on Easter Standard Time, that's gonna be like 5.30 I'm waking up. Yeah. So hey, I'm on Easter Standard Time, but I'm just living, you know, in the West Coast, so like, we're, we're just trying to slowly, state by state, get closer to the, to the, time. the time zone. I'm in Colorado now, so we're already, you know, improving by one hour. And then, and then you're in um, Pittsburgh on Thursday. Yes, for a photo shoot. So, and that's another hour. And then you have, yeah, or two. two Pittsburgh or is the same as Florida. Okay, so then we're there with time adjust. So that, that might be a good tip for you, too, for, for out there. Do you, let's say you're in California and you're doing a show in Florida. Do you start adjusting your like your sleep patterns for that and get ready ahead of time? Is that something that you do during peak week? You know, I try to. Like the closer I can get to it, the better I think because I'm getting more adjusted, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it all depends. It, it depends. I, I mean, I always like to come here first though before I compete or see you or you see me just to make sure I'm looking right and tight and uh, ready to go and you're super motivating. So <laughs> that always helps. So uh, yeah, always depends. Yeah, and we're gonna do some posing tomorrow, fine tune and check and whatnot, and do it day by day. Um, so I think going in from there, we should go into I think some of like the, the mistakes that people make in their mindset going into peak week. So I think that the the most important thing about peak week that people need to understand is peak week is not a weight loss, body fat loss, like get me crazy tighter by losing three pounds, four pounds a week. That is not what peak week is supposed to be. Peak week is is really designed strictly to just get you 
um, just to tighten up and to get your, like to put the final touches on the physique. And by tighten up, we don't mean like losing much body fat. We mean like, hey, this is getting you right. You know, filling up, filling out your muscles, not going crazy with it, not taking any risks. You really shouldn't look dramatically different from, you know, you should from Monday to Saturday. And if you're like on Mon Monday and you're like, oh, I'm just holding a bunch of water, it's most likely you're holding a bunch of body fat still. And, you know, a, a, you taking expel or something like that at the end is not going to solve the problem. You know, so that's where people, I think, mess up the most is where they're, they're taking, you know, diuretics and, you know, expel for, I see people take it for like a month, sometimes two, three weeks before a show. And then by the time the show comes around and then they cut their water again at the end, they're just looking super, super flat, you know, and then they, the, the day after the show, they get some water in them, they eat some food, they eat more carbs, whatever, and they look a little fuller. They're like, man, I wish I would have looked like this the day after. I just missed it. And I'm like, no, you just, you try to do too much and you mess things up is what happens. So um, so a couple, couple of key things I think that you really need to think about is one, get your mindset right. You should be in shape a week before the show, at least, you know, ideally like two weeks before the show, you should be in shape. You know, we don't want to be going crazy, trying really, really hard at the end, grinding it out like crazy. And you're, you're going to come to, the, you're going to come show day. You're going to still be inflamed. Your body's not going to look rested. You're not going to look like how you're supposed to look that fit, like awesome. Just, I just woke up and I look like this look. And that's what they want, especially in bikini. They always, they always tell me that bikini should look like the, uh, just some, you just got out of the house and you just went to the beach that day. Like you shouldn't look like you're dieted down, all gone in the face. You should look like the ultimate fitness model, lively and full. And like you walk around like that every day, even though you don't. So rest is important. Yeah. Unfortunately, I need <laughs> to work on that. But yeah. Rest is important to look like that glowing look where it just looks like you're normal. You don't want to look like sucked down for the day or you haven't had any water and you know, you're, you're barely holding on to life. You know, that's not, that's not bikini. You know, it's, it's a fitness model look. And I think you all need to remember that when you go into this, you're, this is really the ultimate fitness model search is what it is. It's not, that's, that's what it is. You know, it's in everything's in play, your hair, your makeup, your tan, your, your beauty flow, your symmetry and balance, conditioning, your stage presence, your suit color, your jewelry, your heels, your everything is in play. And so that's what a lot of people don't understand. And you get a lot of these like girls that'll finish a show and be like, oh, they went with someone softer that day. I'm like, no, she had 10 out of the 11 things perfect. And she just happened to be a little bit softer than you were. It, that's not what happened, but you had three of the 11 things good. You know, so, so that's, that's just the thing. So bikini is a lot about that. And I think that during peak week, people mess it up a lot. Have you ever had any of those like, I guess you've always done pretty decent with your peak weeks. You didn't have any like nightmares. Oh no, I do have nightmares. Do you have nightmares? I'm the one that told you I get them like crazy. No, no, I mean like nightmare of the day. Like oh. you still don't. <laughs> no. no. Can you tell them about your nightmares? Because, yeah. Because that is, she has these vivid nightmares. Yeah. And then she'll like tell me about it. Go ahead. This is crazy. Oh gosh, yeah, I get nightmares. <laughs> um, the closer I'm to a show, like you know, like oh, I show up, I'm about to walk on stage. Oh, it looks like I forgot to spray tan. Whoops, I don't know if I'll have time to do that. Oh crap, or did I miss my uh, bikini call out or, uh, you know, just not being there in time. I dreamed that like I forgot to wear makeup or my, my heels are missing or I forgot to bring my suit. But the one that I really have that's the most realistic, sometimes I'll have like a dream that I eat like a whole cake or something like that, like a whole cake. And then afterwards I'm like, what did I just do? I just ruined like my contest prep. I'm back to be, Oh my God. You know? And then I wake up and I'm like, Oh wait, Oh goodness. It was just a dream. Thank you. <laughs> like, but do you sometimes wake up and question if it was real, like it actually happened or no? No, I, I think I know right away. Cause okay. I wake up kind of like, like panicked, okay. like, Oh my God. You know? <laughs> yeah. So no, I don't question it. Um, you know, I, I have heard of people like sleep, eat, walk, or sleep, walking, eating though. Yeah. I have heard that. Yeah. I knew a girl that didn't, she had to go to the doctor and everything, but uh, that's a real thing. How, how horrible is that? Yeah. I've seen, I've seen girls fall apart during peak week. You know, I've, I've seen girls do it. There was one girl I knew, it wasn't my client. She just told me the story, um, but she ate three pies. Remember I told you that story? Yeah. She ate three pies a day of the show. She just was like, I'm just, I'm, I've had it. And then she still competed. I mean, obviously she was full and spilled over, but she still competed and uh, she actually did pretty decent to be honest. Mm -hmm. But her, her waistline was definitely blown out. Like she definitely had too many carbs and blew out her waistline. 
it was a lot softer. Probably could have done better. Yeah, I think also a lot of people think that like, oh, I'm about to go on stage uh, this afternoon. I can eat whatever I want anyway. It's not going to show up. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you never know. There's certain foods that can cause some bloating. And especially in bikini, you have, a, you have to have the smallest little waistline ever. So like that definitely can, can be an issue. But other issues like spilling over and stuff like that can happen too. But yeah. a lot of people think like they're immune to like any change in their body because they're so um, close to stage time. Yeah, and what's it's funny is you have those two you have two different mindsets on that, right? You have the people who think, oh, I'm gonna fill out, so I'm gonna have pancakes the morning of the show. When you haven't had like gluten in your diet for 16 weeks, and then all of a sudden you introduce it hours before you're on stage, of course you're gonna have some bloating when that happens. You're introducing foods you haven't had in a long time. And then on top of that, you know, it's hard to calculate the total calories, the total carbs that you're having on top of that. And then on top of that, you gotta go through the digestion period, which is hours you know it's not like an hour and then that food is digested it's in your in your muscles already and you're stored it as glycogen and now you're looking full and crazy it doesn't it's not a process that's that fast so so i always tell everyone you need to have it corrected by friday because if you wake up on saturday and it's not there yet then it's you're just not there it's not going to happen you know it's just you wake up and six hours later you're on stage five hours later you're on stage like you think that that it's not going to be in your stomach and it's not going to affect your waistline and it's going to be in your muscles and already digested and it's just going to be perfect like you're you're in dream world that's that is unpredictable it is unlikely and i don't i don't think it's very smart to go that route so my opinion is and this is how i do things is to have everyone ready on I mean, honestly a lot of times now i'm having i'm on front loading people and i have their carbs earlier in the week and then we have a predictable outcome and then thursday and friday we don't go crazy with carbs and I know that we're going to have a very predictable outcome come Saturday because we already loaded early in the week and we've already fine-tuned and we don't have to worry about spilling over or any of these things. If you did like a Friday load, you have to worry about being spilled over on Saturday. And if you're spilled over on Saturday, there's nothing you can do. It's just, it is what it is, you know? So I like it. I like it. But the only problem is, is that if you do an early load, one thing is I do think you get a better effect out of a, a back load. I think you get a better effect like if you have Friday load, but it's so much more controllable with an early load. So there's the argument for that. Um, and then on, on top of that, you, the other benefit is when you have like the earlier loads is on Thursdays and Fridays, you're not having as much food because you're already loaded. So then your waistline tends to be a little bit smaller on Saturday too. So there's all these like, the, all these factors that go into it. Um, you know, the, the better I get to know someone, the more, the more um, likely I am to do backloading on them because I know how it's gonna, they're going to respond. We don't have to worry about it. And so like with Ashley, we've kind of been talking about it today. Mm -hmm. We're not even positive of what route we're going to travel until tomorrow. And it's already, it's Monday right now. We know we're going to have some carbs today. We're going to look at what she looks like tomorrow. The key for her is her balance and looking at her legs to upper body. And based on how, um, really based on how thick her legs are looking compared to her upper body is how we're going to decide to load. Will she be more flat on purpose? And to keep her legs smaller, will she be fuller? Because the balance is there now, 100%. We could actually fill out we need to who's she going against you know that's another thing too if um you know if if she's competing against very very petite people then why we need to fill her out 100 percent, you know that type of thing so there's like all these weird factors that go into it mm -hmm. at this level so but one of the things i think we need to really talk to about people is to just not do so much where you don't have a predictable result yeah taking a big risk when you're doing all this crazy stuff like you know i've seen it before competitors even like their coach will even like encourage them to have whatever carbs they want the night before. We're, we're talking yeah. about donuts. We're talking about pizza. Like, like I'm like, dude, that is so unpredictable. Yeah. That is so risky. You don't know how your body's going to react. I think me, I, my biggest concern is that it's not going to be digested properly in, in time. Like, you know, that I, I need to have a flat stomach by tomorrow right. morning. And I would say you're someone who pays for it a little more mm -hmm. than, than most, you know, like yeah. you, you see it on you mm -hmm. quite a bit, you know? So yeah, if you look at like the tiny waistlines you're seeing at that Olympia level, you're not, I, I, I can pretty much guarantee, and some of these girls I know for sure what they do, but some of them I don't. And I can pretty much guarantee you're not seeing them doing burger and fry reloads, pancake reloads. A lot of them are doing, you know, rice and coconut oil and just rice. That's what we're gonna do rice for the most part, white rice, jasmine rice. Um, so, you know, the, the, the selection of food is, we try to keep it clean so we can have predictable outcome. We try to minimize, we're not trying to, we're not gonna introduce foods that we haven't had in a very long time 
because it's it's unpredictable. You know, if you're all of a sudden you're like, oh, have a hamburger and and fries, right? Well, like how much how much of an increase in salt is that than her normal daily amount? You know, that's so. Here's the thing with like the sodium thing. I think people way overthink the sodium thing because they try to get too technical about it. And I don't blame them. I used to be like that too. I used to do my peak weeks used to be crazy. Like they were nuts. And, um, and I thought I had it so precise and calculated because I'm very, I'm researched on it, you know? So I was like, there's this, there's a hormone that people try to manipulate called aldosterone, which is basically like, if you eat a lot of sodium one day, you hold water the next day, right? Because it's more than your normal amount of sodium. So whoever, whatever your sodium amount is to, to some degree, you know, obviously if your if your normal sodium amount is like crazy, your body gets, your, your, your body gets used to whatever sodium you're eating. So if you're, normally eating, you know, 2000 milligrams a day, the body gets kind of used to eating 2000 milligrams a day. And then that's not a lot to the body and it doesn't hold water. So because it's already adapted to that, it's already gotten used to this is my normal, this is my, my homeostatic area for sodium. So aldosterone is not firing off. It's not saying, Hey, hold water, hold water. Where, where you start holding water is when you go from 2000, which is your normal, all of a sudden to 5,000 a day. And now that is your, that's a lot to your body because it's not used to it. And then you hold water. So that's what people worry about. So they'll start doing all these crazy things to eliminate the like sodium water retention when that doesn't even happen, when sodium water retention doesn't happen if you're eating this, the normal amounts you do. So why take all this risk? You know, I get that you can manipulate and get a little bit drier effect if you did manipulate it, but we're talking a minute difference of, um, of, of how much water you're going to hold when you're manipulating those things. And the risk is substantial. So if you're getting a very, very little bit of a benefit and the risk is substantial, to me, it's just not worth it. Just be a little bit leaner going into peak week and you're going to be fine. That's what, that's kind of the route now. Just be ready and just walk on stage. That's kind of the, the more we can do that, the better. Yeah. I think some people are super surprised when they hear like what my peak week entails. Like even I got a message in my inbox, um, like two days ago and he's like, good luck at your show. I'm wishing you don't have any cramps on stage. And I'm like, huh? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm like, did you get me mixed up with somebody else? Like, because I was thinking, like, just, just, did he think I'm somebody else that had like a cramp on stage? And he's like, well, no, I just know you guys, you know, cut your water and you're dehydrated. And I'm like, I don't cut my water. Yeah. And I'm not dehydrated. I don't cut salt. I don't cut water. The only exception is obviously the day of the show. I'm not drinking a gallon before I get on stage because again, we're going back to that small waistline. Yeah. The, the day of the show, I will more so sip throughout the day rather than chug a gallon. But, uh, yeah, he was quite surprised. But I get that all the time. People are asking me like how they manipulate, how I manipulate water and stuff throughout peak week and salt. And you know, it's like, it's not, not as hard as you think. I just, you know, eat as much salt as I normally do. I don't, you know, consume more salt than usual. Cause I don't want that uh, in flux. You know, it's not like I'm going to chug a pickle jar that <laughs> before, but uh, you know, I'm still using my seasonings, my hot sauce, still drinking water regularly. Yeah, yeah, in the day of the show, um, a lot of times I, I basically tell, if, if you're competing, if you wake up like at 6, 5, and you're competing at 12, like I have girls basically doing about a liter of water is like a normal amount, you know, 16 ounces to a liter, you know, if you're, if you're I basically say if you're thirsty, drink, you know, but don't be crazy, you know, don't, don't drink a gallon before you're, because, and the main reason is, honestly, is I've seen so many tans ruined. Oh, by the pee. By the pee, <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're glued into your suit at a certain point, yeah. and, and trying to pull the suit aside to, pee like and you're doing it all the time you're nervous and the water sitting in your stomach if you're drinking too much that's the only reason there's no other no other thing but if you're if you're cutting water you really need to research like you really need to research the effects of water on your physique because more often than not when someone wakes up on saturday and they're flat they're, it's it's more often than not water and maybe that person like didn't have any sodium that week because they thought it was a good idea like it more often than not it's a water thing yeah, people forget muscles are made of water too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. If we could squeeze a muscle like a sponge, we would just drip water out of that muscle. Like, water. yeah, it would, it would just drip out. Like there's a lot of water. So, and people are like, oh, I just want the water that's under my skin. And it's funny is that like these companies that did, they used to do it. They don't do it anymore. They used to do this marketing for diuretic, like, like, a, like an over-the-counter diuretic, like an expel or whatever, those types of things. Um, and I'm not against those things. It's just, there's a, there's a right way of doing them and not using them for long periods or aggressively is not going to help you. You know, um, I have no problem with getting sweat out of you, getting a little bit of diuretic out of you, getting, getting water moving, um, you know, that last week, but there's no reason to be doing it for prolonged periods. There's no reason to be going aggressive with it and, and flattening your body out for, for no, no effect other than making you look worse. Mm -hmm. So like that, it's funny. They used to have these like ads 
and it would have like skin and then it would have like blue like river of water and then it would have <laughs> muscle and it's like remove the water from under the skin and i'm like that's not how the body oh. works like you imagine like cutting yourself and springing a leak of just water just floating out of you. And they literally made it look like that. And I'm like, you guys are being so deceptive on how you're presenting this mm. as like a thing for tightening up for the beach, for the show or whatever. It doesn't work that way. So you, you, have, a, you have water in a lot of different areas and percentages. We won't get into it too technically, but there's a percentage of water that's in cells, percentage of water that's outside of cells, percentage of water that's like basically in between cells. And so when... The, the most, the highest percentage of water you have is going to be in the cell. That's where you have most of the water. And then a lot of the percentage you have of water that's out of the cell, so extracellular water, is, is like things like that you don't want to get rid of, like your, the, the, your, like your blood. Like you, that's a lot of water. There's a lot of water in that. You don't want to reduce that. <laughs> like it's not something, you know, so if you're reducing, if, if most of it's in muscle cells and then a lot of it's in the blood and you think that cutting it's going to make you look better, it's just, you really got to think about how that works. You really got to think about how the body works. And you'll see a lot of guys now not cutting water very often. And so it, what, what sucks, honestly, what sucks about the whole water thing is like when people actually get hurt doing shows and they pass out or faint, whatever, which happens literally at every, like, like not at every, but like I would say two to three national shows a year. And it's happened, I've seen it happen at least three times where I was like there, like where I was like there and someone was tanning. And then they faint in the tanning, uh, getting tanned. And then they call in one of the judges. It happened once I was in line. I forget who I was in line with, uh, but it was with one of the, the judges at USA's. And then um, someone walks over to the judge. We're getting food in the morning. He, I was in line next to him at this buffet. And um, someone walks over to him like, hey, you got to check on someone. Uh, they fainted. And he's like, well, he's like, well, I already know how that's going to go. He's like, someone cut water. I got to kick them out of the show, you know, for their own safety and, and make sure that they're being healthy. So you have all these people who luckily that person was okay but they did get cut from the show because your safety is a concern. If you're fainting before you go on stage, yeah, you don't get to go on stage. You go to, you go to make sure that you're okay and healthy, hydrated, and maybe even take you to the, to the hospital to get you an IV. So it's just, you can ruin your whole prep. One, you're not going to look better by doing it. And two, you take risks, health risks for no reason at all, other than to look worse. It's crazy. So, um, so that's a, that's one. So if you're do your research on that, you know, there's a lot of opinions on that. Uh, mine's right. <laughs> <laughs> but but um do your research on it because even the, the most researched guys will tell you hey it's not going to make you look better if you're holding water and you think that you're holding water you're probably just holding body fat and that's the sad reality of it don't you know you, you're not going to see water look like fat like it's just not a thing it's very very like uncommon so mm -hmm. um so that's main the main thing is take it easy i think we're coming to when we come to peak week the the, the lo least you do the better and more predictable the results going to be just be in shape. You, of course, you're gonna be flat going into peak week. Most people are flat going into peak week because you're dieting so hard, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that you're really good about dealing with the stress of being flat. Uh, oh yeah, I don't care if I'm flat. Yeah, exactly. Like it, you're- Because really the booty always be popping <laughs> yeah. 24 seven, 365 <laughs> days a year. The booty be popping. Always popping. If, any, if anything, it's too much. That's the only time I get to <laughs> Oh my gosh, people listening to this, like, that don't understand my humor, they're probably like, oh my God, that girl's so cocky. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's my, my humor. This is, me. this is her humor, and she's <laughs> she's she's not as, uh, her, her jokes progressively get <laughs> worse. They get worse. <laughs> the closer I get to a show, I was just telling Adam, I'm like, I apologize for all the bad jokes. They're just not hitting right, you know? <laughs> yes, she's her jokes. This is my jokes, because like, it's funny to me, but you know. <laughs> you know what, you must have been a riot in 2017. Oh, I, was. I kid you not. I was. I, I was super creative too. It's like now all my energy goes into these hamstrings and then the booty and that nuns left from a brain. It's, yeah, it's all tragic. Your, all of your all of your comedy blood went to your butt. Oh my god. No. <laughs> so so uh, um yeah, so as far as like this whole thing goes, don't overthink it. Just be in shape. If you think that you're doing too much, you probably are. You are going to be flat going into it. Don't tell your coach about it. They know, you know, and like I, I hate when someone's 10 weeks out and they're like, dude, I'm just flat. I'm just, I really, I'm like, who cares if you're flat right now? You you can't be losing body fat at the rate that you're losing it and be super full at the same time. Those two things don't go hand in hand. And in bikini, I think that you have a good perspective and that people need to hear too, that about being full or being flat. Cause a lot of times on stage, 
Ashley's not fully loaded with carbs. She's not yeah. full at all. Like now here's the thing. She looks full, even though she's not okay. And she could be fuller, of course, but at, at a certain point when you have so much muscle and you still have pop, you don't really need to be a hundred percent full. You know? Right. I would much rather, in my personal opinion, and, and this is like from a bikini competitor, I understand it might be different for like bodybuilding and stuff, but as a bikini, a bikini competitor, my thought is I would rather be flatter than fuller and thicker because when I'm fuller and thicker, thicker and maybe a little softer too, it's not the best look for me personally. We've tried like a few different um, fuller looks yeah. and uh, I just look kind of thick. So in comparison, so, you know, it's just you know, individual basis. But my opinion is I'd much rather it be flat. That's safer for me than to be totally filled out and spilled over. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a thing. It's really hard to like, you got, I think everyone listening to this needs to understand you're never going to be 100% full. It's just not going to happen where you're a hundred percent nailed it full. You're usually like 110%. You know, you spilled over by 10%. You ate too many carbs or you're 90%. Right. And, and so I'm a fan of bringing people in like at that 90% range. I never want to sacrifice size uh, for conditioning, you know, because it's, this is not a size thing. You know, this is not, you know, you know, bodybuilding now it's going that direction where full, they are paying, they are sacrificing a little bit of conditioning for overall fullness and size. And that's just the trend right now. And that's why you hear these bodybuilders like, you'll hear like Dorian Yates saying the guys aren't as lean as they used to be. Well, that's not what they're going for right now. You know, Dexter Jackson was as lean as they used to be. And now he's as full as they want him to be. He's kept up with the time. So he's paid attention. He did, he wouldn't be doing as good if he was being as dry as he was back then because he's lacking the fullness that they want. So it's a little different in bodybuilding, but in bikini, if I never think that it's worth the, it's worth the risk to be go for that overly full. Now there are, there are exceptions and I will give you a couple exceptions on that too. If you are a very petite bikini competitor, you're very petite, and let's say you don't have all the muscle you need. Um, so here's the thing about Ashley is she has all the muscle she needs. So even if she's not 100% full with all her muscles, it doesn't matter because she's more muscular than most of the girls she's going against. Not than all, but than most. So as a massive, when she looks right in the middle, it's perfect. Now, if you're undersized and you don't have as much muscle as you need to have, then my general thought process is, okay, let's get this girl too lean. I'll get her way too lean. In the week of the show, during peak week, I will overload her. I will spill her over that way when she's spilled over. Yeah, she looks a little bit softer, but she was too hard to begin with anyway. And that's when it makes sense to be 110% full, right? So there's different, it's going to be different for every girl. And usually I'll have every girl check in, you know, three, four times during peak week just to make sure that we nail it. That's the only time we have like so many check-ins per week. So for even for pros, we'll have them check in once a week, sometimes twice a week but it's like pretty rare. So, you know, um, so I think that that's going to be good for a lot of you to hear that, that you have, you have women like Ashley doing, you know, coming in at pro honestly, probably sometimes like 70%, 80% full, but looks hundred percent full. No one ever is going to be like, Oh, she's flat. You know, they just, cause it doesn't look like that. And if that's the problem is like when judges tell you this stuff, they're like, Oh, you, you're, you know, here's a problem that you're going to get for feedback too. I think I'm talking too much. But here's, here's a problem you're going to get from feedback too. And I hate when judges say this. So if judges, if you're listening to this, maybe use a different term. Um, judges will say you need to be fuller. They always say you need to be fuller. Okay? Fuller means two things. It doesn't just, so what happens when people say they need to be fuller to, to athletes, they'll come to me and be like, oh, the judge said I was flat. And I'm like, wait, did the judge say you're flat or did they say you need to be fuller? Well, they said I need to be fuller. I'm like, well, that means two things. That means you need to fill out your frame and get more muscular doesn't necessarily mean you didn't have as much carbs as you needed to have in your flat. The judges don't know that you're flat because they don't know what you looked like going into peak week. They don't know what you looked like when you started this. Now they know when like Ashley would be flat because they've seen her 30 times. You know, they know when Issa is flat because they saw her compete at the Olympia last year. And if she was flat, yeah, they could say, oh, you're flat. And that's a different statement than to an amateur bikini competitor who the judges, you know, they see a thousand amateurs at a national show. They, and they say you're fuller, they don't necessarily mean you're flat because they don't know if you're flat or not. They just need, mean you need more muscle. So just you have to take that into consideration too because that's going to mess with a lot of people's heads that they need more carbs and then they start overfilling carbs, overfilling carbs, trying to fill out their frame thinking because the judge said they're flat. 
when all they really needed was more muscle. So um, anyway, that's just a, a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> I hear you. I wish the judges would just say, you just need to get more muscular, just a little bit more muscular, instead of saying you need to get fuller, because that means two different things. And no competitor ever thinks fuller means they need more muscle. They always think, I needed more carbs because I was flat. That's so it. I guess the same could be said whenever you hear them say, it looks like you spilled over, could just be actual fat could instead be. of carb. Because they don't know. Right? It's impossible. You can't. I mean, that would be a very polite way to say it. <laughs> yeah. no, one, no one is that good unless they know your prior pictures that week. They know your pictures of the, the week before that. Like, if you gave them all that information, yes, it's pretty easy to see if you spilled over or not. But if I just saw pictures of someone and saw, or saw them on stage one day, I have no, I have no baseline idea of where they're coming from. I have no idea if they're spilled over, if they're just fat, if, you know, if they did way too much sodium the day before the show, if they ate gluten right before and it bloated them out. I have no idea. All I know is that's what they look like right there. I've never seen them before. So no clue. You know? And so I'm going to say, Oh, you need to be fuller because they didn't have as much muscular or you need to be, uh, you know, maybe you spilled over, you know, or you need to be better at condition, you know? And so, um, yeah, so just, I would say, you know, yeah, ask them, ask the judges what they think of your overall physique, but just remember, analyze the, uh, analyze the critique, make sure that it's accurate. So mm -hmm. you're not making these crazy assumptions. And then, and then what happens is the next show, these girls go into the next show and they just eat like crazy carbs. They said, I need to be fuller. So I'm not gonna be flat this time. So anyway, I guess I went off on that one a little bit, but peak week, back to peak week. Back to the peak week. What, what else do we got for them? I would like week? to kind of like, tell them a little bit more about our workouts this week because yeah. people oh, yeah, that's might yeah. be thinking I'm just like killing it all the way until show day. And that is not the case. Actually peak week, if done correctly. And if you're, if you're in a good spot, I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot. Yeah. It's easy. We're coasting. Yeah. We are coasting. We are minimizing that inflammation. I was going hard for so long and now I can chill out a little bit during peak week. The workouts are less intense especially with the legs, less cardio or just, I guess, movement and, and on my legs in general. That's my area that would get inflamed. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I, um, I'm liking the fact that I can relax and de-stress a little bit during this week and not have to like kind of dread like, oh my God, it's going to be such a hard yeah. workout day today. You know, I'm already like, you know, nervous about the show. So it's like one less, one, one less thing to worry about because I'm in a good spot. Yeah, exactly. And so that's, a, I think that's really important. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of times you're in the, this is the thing. And I did this too when I was younger, you know, we didn't have the information available out there like we have now. There was no podcast, there was no YouTube, there was no, there was nothing, you know? So, you know, we just talked to your local gym bro and whoever that guy was, I was like, that was kind of how you got your information. So it was that in like actual, actual like books, which is crazy to even think about. So during, you know, my first couple peak weeks when I was like 18, I was like crushing in the gym because you're in this mindset of like, especially when you're really, really in the zone, you're like, whatever it takes mindset, which is what a lot of competitors have, which I honestly, I love that mindset, to be honest, like whatever that, whatever it takes mentality is what it takes to climb to the top. You know, that obsessed mentality is, it is to be at the top of anything. It, the obsessed mentality is just part of it, you know, but usually you love it so much that you're not like, it's not like a forced obsession. It's like a desired obsession. So we can, that's a whole other topic. But um, at that mindset, you're like, okay, I've been killing myself for 15 weeks. I'm almost there. I got five more workouts. These workouts are going to be the ones that really crush it. I have so much motivation. I don't care if my energy sucks. I have, I have energy from within, from my, like, my whatever, my spirit energy. I don't know what you're going to call it. So because you're just so motivated, you know, that week. And you want to crush it. But the problem is, is that you got to remember the recovery process and, and the damage that you do to your, your muscle, it's, that's, that is gonna show up on your physique, especially when you're that lean. You know, when you're soft and you're crushing it, you don't see the little bit of water retention, the little bit of like inflammation you have from the micro trauma on your, your muscles that you worked. But when you're, you know, when you're a guy and you're 7% stepping on stage or a bikini competitor at like 14% stepping on stage, you're gonna see it a lot more, especially in areas like the glute tie-in. So like this week, yeah, we're not gonna crush it in the gym. It's only Monday, Tuesday, so we can still get away with it for a, maybe another day, but we can go decently hard. But Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and honestly, a lot of times, even Monday through Friday, depending on the person, you just have them really kind of ease in in their workouts, you know? When you have an Ashley who has been working out since she was a fetus, you know? 
<laughs> been lifting weights since I was in the womb. Yeah, since she was since she was there. She recovers at a faster rate, so you could yeah, you have more room. If you're let's be real who you are, you know, if you've been if you and be honest with yourself, you know, if you've only been working out really hard for the 60 weeks and the rest of the time you're kind of, you know, three times a week, you're kind of nonchalant, um, and then you really crushed it for 16 weeks, well, yeah, you're probably not going to recover as fast as someone who was an athlete their whole life. And whatnot. So you got to take that into account too. Ashley can, yeah, she can work out a little bit harder than most because I'm not worried about her recovery and we're not going to work out so hard where that's even going to be an issue. Now, on certain areas like her shoulders, why not crush her mm-hmm. shoulders? Why not? Yeah, if they get inflamed, it's like whatever. Yeah. It's not like they're looking for striation. You know, we're talking bikini guys, yeah. so they get a little little fuller, but they're not, you know, as crisp. That's okay. Yeah. Now, if you're, you know, Phil Heath or Sean Roden going to the Olympia, then yeah, you probably want to be smart about that and, and keep your inflammation and everything down to a minimum. And their workouts, some of these bodybuilders don't even work out their legs for the last two weeks before a show. You know, it's, they just really want that detail in their legs. So a lot of them it's, it's very common for seven to 10 days, very common for them to just not work out their legs at all. Um, ben Pakulski would not work them out for six weeks. Crazy. Yeah, I know. He would do, now, now I will say, and Ben's awesome. He's more of like a, he's a, definitely a research type of approach, which, I, which is kind of my approach too. Um, but he will do really, really hard wind gates. So, which is like the bike, like a, it's basically like a drop set of resistance on a bike, but with like weights. And so that crushes his legs and genetically he's more gifted in his legs than he is in his upper body. So, so it, it makes sense for him to balance it out, but he, he has no problem keeping his legs, keeping his detail just with doing the wind gate, which is basically hit cardio. I think he does it. I don't know how many times a week he does it. I want to say it's, it's decent, a decent amount. He's getting ready for a show, you know? So, um, but so that there, that's just kind of the extreme of it. Six weeks is as far as I've seen all the way down to, you know, a week basically for body moves. And that just shows you, Hey, when you ease up a little bit, these body blows have figured it out. When you ease up a little bit, you get more detail, you know? And so you got to be lean going into peak week to afford that. Though. Yeah. You don't, like if you're, you know, stressing out, if you're going to get lean enough, that's when you might push a little harder in hopes that like you get a little leaner because the caloric burn, but you know, that's not the, the ideal. And, um, you know, for us, I think we're, we kind of talked a little bit about it before. So today I did shoulders. Mm-hmm. Um, tomorrow I might do a little isolation glutes. And then probably Wednesday is my last day to work out. Wednesday, my show's on Saturday. On Wednesday, we'll probably do arms, bicep, tricep, or shoulder, depending. Yeah. Um, and then as for cardio, maybe just walking instead of like, you know, an intense workout class like I've been yeah. doing. Orange Theory classes five or six days a week, and I've been really pushing it. So like, you know, it's nice that uh, I earned it. Um, but yeah, if anything changes, it might be a little, little more cardio work. We'll see tomorrow yeah. when we check in. It's going to do some steady state, keep it, keep you going, keep you getting, getting yeah, some sweat keep, going. Keep and that's the, the fluids moving here. Yeah. I yeah. think it's important to you that like, they know that we're not just like, just cause it's peak week also doesn't mean like slack off and just watch Netflix for an entire week. You still yeah. got to get moving, yeah. you know, still keep the body moving, but not to the intensity you usually do. Yeah. I think that it's, it's basically your normal workouts and stuff at 80% is a mm-hmm. safe way of saying it. Cause you don't want to go to 0% you know, just to recover. Cause then you're going to start holding water. It's totally different. Remember peak week is, 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 if you can get anything from this podcast this time, peak week is not about making these dramatic changes for an effect that is likely not going to happen that you shouldn't need anyway, cause you should be in shape for it. Um, I have a, I have a girl in the UK right now. I'm going to be posting pictures with her, uh, posting pictures probably this week of her, her whole transformation. Now, the cool thing is she's done, and I won't say it's a transformation. She competed last year and she was really good. But this, but her whole off season was so good that she's literally reducing her. She's three weeks out, reducing all of her cardio to almost none. Like it's, we're slowly tapering it down and her calories are increasing because she earned an easy peak week. So when that girl gets on stage, she's, she's going to be her best she could possibly be at this time because she's going to be rested. She's going to be fed. She's going to be having low cardio. She's going to look vibrant. You know, and that should be everyone's goal. And that happens in the off season. And that's why, one of the reasons why, now I will say, first, you do have harder preps, but you've dieted, you know, 40 times for shows or whatever it is. <laughs> so it's, of course, it's going to be a little harder. Mm-hmm. But um, you stay leaner in the off season and you make your preps are, are more realistic where you can afford these easy peak weeks like she just talked about. If you are soft during peak week and you still have body fat to lose, yeah, a carb backload may be the best thing and just crushing it for three days you know, and then resting Thursday, Friday might be the only option, you know, but that's a, it's an unpredictable high risk scenario. 
that ideally you just maintained well in the off season and you did this as an athlete, not as a, a visitor to the sport. And you did as an athlete and you progressed and progressed and progressed and every show gets a little bit better and a little bit easier. So, um, so I guess that's, that's what I have on that. Yeah. Heck yeah. Woo woo. So peak week. Peak week. I don't know if we have yeah. anything else besides the, everyone out there, this is going to come out on Thursday. Okay. Thursday. Ashley is competing on Saturday. Saturday. I want everyone to just light up Ashley's oh, Instagram yeah, I'm blushing. Oh, nice. <laughs> and wish, wish her a ton of luck. Well, thank you. Because, it. and so you guys know this is, is the clash? Is it on, um, is it on live stream? Do we know that? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I would imagine there is some sort of live stream. Yeah. There usually is. So we'll all wish her luck. It is bikini. So there's a lot of things we can't account on for a bikini. Um, you know, it looks like it's going to, this is a, just so you guys know, this is a, actually a really, um, big show. It's a talented show. It's probably, I would say it goes Olympia, then Arnold, and then, I mean, this is up there. It's like up there with New York. It's up there with Tampa. It might even be more because the, um, we don't ever, we never talk prize or anything like that, but it does affect who shows up because this is actually a pretty big show for that. So, um, it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good showing. It's going to be, Ashley's at hundred percent. She's weighted and not and some sem, semi-intentionally, <laughs> semi-unintentionally. We've waited because we picked the wrong shows. Yeah. And um, she's a, she's very close to her peak. She looks very much like yeah. the, I would say like the Arnold. Yeah. I think uh, the show all come in on the, uh, I don't even want to say the fuller side, yeah, that's but great. the more muscular side yeah. than, um, than in comparison to let's say the Olympia, but hopefully um, still as lean as the Olympia, if that makes sense. So yeah. as long as, you know, I think the judges prefer me leaner yeah, than do. softer. So as long as I'm lean, um, I can carry a little more muscle, I think. Yeah. So we'll see. You know, I, I was telling Adam earlier, you know, can't be picky with the shows this year. They're, they're sparse at this time. So, you know, whatever happens, I'm just happy to be there and, and happy to finally get back into the swing of things. Then we'll go from there after the show and then start planning more of what's ahead for the season. Yes, so there you go, guys. So happy, happy peak week, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. Wish me some sleep. Yeah, wish you some sleep more than yes. luck. We don't need, we, if we get the sleep, we don't need the luck. Oh, and, <laughs> and if you guys, I, already, I tell my mom this every prep, and I tell you this too, Adam. <laughs> if, you, if you don't mind, uh, tonight, sing a prayer for my glutes. <laughs> Pray for my glutes. Pray yeah. my glutes. Praise the glutes, guys. We'll be nice and crispy. Get her some crispy and glutes. Full, <laughs> full crispy glutes with them hand tie-ins just popping through. Just don't go away. We just don't need them to change at this point. Just don't leave. Just don't, don't leave, leave us. us. For five hey. days. Five days. Don't leave us. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. And my glutes will also appreciate that as well. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Remember, um, awesome ebooks at ashleykfit.com. We do contest prep all over the world. Teamaliphysique.com. Follow us on Instagram. Um, soon, we are starting construction on the biggest building. We just signed the paperwork. Um, they are submitted paper. They submitted permits now. They say ten days, ten weeks from that time. So I'm thinking, unless I'm being lied to, we're gonna be we're gonna have it before the Olympia. Uh, you know, at, at, uh, for Olympia weekend, I'm going to invite all of our podcast listeners in to get a workout. Hopefully if they allow me to <laughs> at that point. And, um, but yeah, that's exciting stuff. And then Ashley will be doing posing classes there one-on-ones yes. if you're ever in the area, so you can shoot her a DM for that, but that won't be for about 10 week period. So mm -hmm. anyway, thank you guys so much. And don't be one of those guys that asked her to do a posing session during the Olympia. She's obviously, <laughs> she's obviously, I mean, I'm right. really, I don't know. yeah, I mean, I'm like, I'm maybe like, like a kiss. okay, maybe on a, how about this? We call it, you said baby, guys, you know, girls, what? girls, yeah, okay. I'm like, what? So I'm two, not supposing any guys. Let's draw, <laughs> let's stop it at Tuesday. How's that? Okay, you, you're the coach. You call a shot. You do too much before the Olympia, actually. Right? I mean, yeah. You, you really do. And it's, and it's like, it's crap. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. That's all I can say. It's just a lot. So, all right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. We'll talk to you next time.